How would you define your way of making cinema? I wouldn't call what I do um, on the film extra action, I wouldn't call it making cinema, I would just call that shooting some behind the scenes footage of girls rolling around. Um, in the 80s and early 90s I made a bunch of short films that I would call films where I actually set out to with an idea and tried to film something but extra action was just me with a camera and a girl just videotaping whatever they were doing. Uh, do I think that the word underground is correct? Um, I, I, I don't know what underground means in today's world. Um, when I first was making films, underground meant that you did not show at established venues. You could, if you made films, you would show them in nightclubs or to your friends or in little film clubs, but you never showed in an actual theater. Um, these days, I guess the underground exists on the internet, but I wouldn't even call that underground because it's available for everyone to see. Someone said that you do cinema transgression. What is transgression? Um, what we were trying to do in cinema transgression is make films that were about, or films that put people in situations that went beyond their comfort zones or films that made the audience feel like they were seeing something that they weren't comfortable seeing. Um, it's basically taking the established, a person's established uh, ethics or morals and then trying to get them to go a little bit beyond it to uh, transgress their boundaries. So what's the relationship to my photographs and my movies? The, it says we're mostly referring to extra action here, where this link is very tight. Um, when, I first, when I made films back in the 80s, I would only take photographs as film stills, as some kind of illustration for the, for the films that I was making. Um, and as a result, there were very few films around, I mean, very few photographs around. But when I quit making the films and started concentrating on photographs, then I was shooting video just as some kind of background illustration of the photographs, of what might have been happening when I was shooting the photographs. So it kind of, the two um, processes kind of reversed. I'm going to read this question. This is in English. How come do you choose women, and particularly very young ones, as the subject of your work? I started shooting women that were in their 20s back in, I don't know, the 80s. And I was actually in my 20s then. And that became my subject matter. And over the years, I've gotten older, but the subject matter has stayed the same. So, I mean, it seems like they're young girls, but they're actually the same girls I've been photographing ever since the beginning. What am I looking for in them? Um, and I'm, with a model, I'm just looking for... Um, I'm looking for girls that appeal to me on a girls that appeal to me personally. Um, and there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of girls that appeal, appeal to me personally. Um, what am I looking for in them? I'm, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just looking for people that fit into my subject matter and what I find interesting and also a lot of nostalgia. Girls that remind me of another time period, remind me of my youth, etc. Could you please tell us how you start working with the models? How do you choose them? How do you establish a reliable relationship and complicity with them? 
Uh, before the internet, I used to find models through uh, a set of friends. I'd shoot one girl, and she would tell her friends, or she would say, well, you might want to shoot this girl, and that girl would say, well, you might want to shoot this girl. And they just kind of spread around. And I got models that way. Uh, but since the internet, I generally just have girls email me that know my work and say they want to model or want to give it a shot. Um, that makes things a lot easier because I can ask them to send photographs. Uh, and then if I like the photographs, I say, well, can you meet me? This is if they live in New York. If they live somewhere else, I meet them wherever they, wherever they are if I happen to be in that place. But in New York, I ask the girls to come over, we discuss the ideas I have and what their limits are. And then if they, if they do show up, that's the big test right there to see if a model actually shows up when she says she is because um, I'd say 50% of the models never show up. Um, more like 75% of the girls that write would say they're interested in modeling they're not really interested in modeling, they just want to see if um, I would shoot them. But when it gets to actually shooting, then they aren't there anymore. How do, how do you establish a relationship with them? Um, when I first start working with a model, I'll shoot, I'll have a list of ideas I want to shoot. And if they seem to be willing to do whatever I have on the list, but the next time I shoot them, if they're good, I'll push it a little bit further. And the next time a little further, next time a little further. But this is only with the ones I really, really like to shoot. The ones that seem willing to do anything, I'm, I'm going to probably shoot more often than the ones who have some limits and boundaries and feel weird about things. What are your role models in cinema and photography? Um, I don't really have role models except maybe Larry Clark because he started with photographs and then he went and became a filmmaker. Um, I like uh, people who reinvent themselves. That's one kind of role model or I mean, I could give you a list. The list is long. Um, <laughs> my role models are generally people that never stop. You know, that, that um, even though their work is not accepted at the beginning, they continue to produce it and eventually have some kind of success. Um, Do you think your style and aesthetics would be different outside the New York context? And yes, I think my style would definitely be different, um, mainly because the environments would be different. Um, New York is uh, very, uh, most people here are very cynical, myself included, and there's a lot of dark humor, like uh, negative humor. And I come from a scene that was um, pretty nihilistic. I think if I was living on a farm, I may not still have that kind of nihilism. In fact, New York is filled with people who don't really like where they're, they're living. So they leave that place and go to New York where they can actually do some of the things they are dreaming about or where they feel more comfortable with their ideas. Um, excuse me. For example, I met Lydia Lunch here in New York and for the first time, I, not the first time, but I was, I felt like I was, well when I came to New York I felt like I met a lot of people who didn't think some of the things I thought about and wanted to do were crazy. Your relationship with music is essential, and we're especially referring to the, your work with Lydia Lunch. 
but also Sonic Youth in your video clips. What are your thoughts on relationships between sound and image? Well, you could take um, a scene of a person walking down a hallway and depending on what kind of music you put to it, it can the scene can be scary, it can be happy, it can be reflective, you know, like thoughtful, like it's a, a scene in which people, the person's thinking. Um, all this depends on the music. If you put some scary music on it, and that person's walking down the hallway, you're going to wonder what's going to happen. If you put some happy music, it's like, oh, the person's happy, uh, etc. And you can take, just for this, the same is true of uh, my old films and, you know, that stuff. I can't imagine them without the, some of the soundtracks. Um, the guy who did the music in the old films, Jim Thurwell, was Lydia Lunch's boyfriend at the time we were making the films, and he was also a big innovator with uh, sampling and electronic music and industrial music. Um, he really defined what was in a lot of those um, old films. Have you ever thought about making a long feature film? Uh, back in the late 80s, I had a grant to make a long feature film, and I discussed it with Lydia for a long time. Um, we wrote some, some uh, treatments about different ideas. And when it came down to it, I just didn't feel like I had that much to say, enough stuff to say that could be in a film. I mean, I like to watch other people's films. I'm not so interested in producing a film that has a deep message. Um, if I was to make a film, I would want it to be like, I mean, the kind of film I would like to make would be the kind of thought-provoking film like uh, Antonioni made, um, like say, Blow Up. I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to make a film like that, but that kind of film isn't as interesting to people these days. Um, back in the 90s, we talked about, I talked about making uh, some of the films I talked about with Lydia were films that were kind of pushing the limits of what Finger did. And we couldn't, it was hard to come up with something that was still going to shock people um, and take it further. And then when it got right down to it, I wasn't so sure that's what I wanted to do. And I've also talked with people about making horror films back when horror films were slasher films, when they got big. Just, I, I tried all kinds of films in my head. But um, I think now I just might make some conceptual films. Thanks. got to run some of this tape out to um, cover up the previous interview. Look, here's a photograph of a drug bust on 13th Street. Oh, actually on 3rd Street. This was a drug bust on my block about 10 years ago. Look at all those guys that the cops have busted. All those guys were drug dealers. This is my CDs which are totally useless now. A Rube Grillet book, The Voyeur, what a nice book. There's me as a little kid on the right, the guy with the glasses, with my mom and my sister and brothers.
this is my clock. Is it the time code? All right, you can see out my windows. That's New York over there. That's downtown. I don't know how clear it is. This is what it looks like out my old windows. The neighbors, the backyard. How exciting. It's not exciting. Look over here, you can see the Williamsburg Bridge. You can just barely see it over there through the buildings.